All right, so I'm gonna do a quick review on this Tranquility Luxury Vital Plank. And it's got about a 5 16 thickness. This is the one that we chose to do for our lower level with a concrete base. So I started off doing the hardest part. I did my hallway. And I guess I still have to do the other part. So I'm going to vapor, finish vapor barrier and I'm going to overlap it under that. Um, it's much easier when you um, have your everything out of the room. So I did all the hallway and the cuts. That was pretty difficult. This floor is coming out. This floor is coming out. Um, there was carpet we removed, so we got a pretty nice gap under there. I did have to use my multi-tool under the uh, door frames. Uh, well, the, the flow I did here was I didn't want to stagger them. I wanted to keep the same strip because it's the long. I mean, it went all the way to that wall. We had about 40, well, that wall back there. It went to about 40, is it 47 feet from inside dimension. And I'm gonna I'm gonna make float into the closet. I have to do the store stair piece. It's gonna run a little bit short, and about three quarter inch there. I run a the sill the sill plate and make the cuts here. So I was gonna demonstrate since that was all hard how to do this because this is my review on this luxury vinyl plank. 5 16 thickness. It does not have a cork bottom. It does have its own built in uh, underlayment, so to speak. All right. You want to hold the camera for me, babe? Baby skins? Oh. Well, she's busy. So, to get your measurements, this room, I already have the measurements. So, um, what I do to make this simple, I got a, my little video, videographer is coming. Just keep the phone in landscape mode here, not portrait. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Tell my daughter to help me. So, you're normally going to keep it under here. You, most, most woodwork is about three-eighths to three-quarter thick, so this is a half-inch thick. And then you're not supposed to run your drywall all the way down to the ground. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. We have an exterior wall. It's a flow, it's, uh, we're on a gentle slope, so half it's the basement, half it's the walkout. So some of those areas, it was dirty underneath there. Dirt, whatever, from rodents or, you know, we're in the country. So some of that had filled in. There's no gap, there's, there's a gap here. So a lot of times you're bored, it goes under your woodwork. But this floor, I realize some of it's going to go under the floor too. So as long as you stop at the wall when you're doing your measurements, as you're sliding them in, some of these you're going to have to slide in the uh, horizontal way. And most of the time, you're going to be vertical. Verticals, to me, it's better because you're going against, when you're pushing these in, And you have a, uh, one here. There's less to push on this up to get in here than it would be to start it here and hammer it all the way down to get it into this channel. Because these floors are set up to where you can go this way too if you need it to. And then you can also go back the other way. You can zig them, but then but you have to continue into the clockwise motion, I think, because of the way this, but. So how I start my, my corners, my edges here, I should have did the video of how I did all those corners and how you have to maneuver it to get underneath the woodwork and all that. So you keep your work area clean, like I have here, you know, sharp objects and everything. You have to make sure, I put my little Chinese stars over here in the corner because to keep this straight, to go against this brick, we have to give the illusion that this is square, even though this is not. The flooring is, this is not. So I'll put the channel piece here. Um, 
and caulk it on here. I'm not going to be drilled to my brick. Same thing down here when I do the drop in this piece. you got to put the vapor barrier on. So you're going to keep a stopper there. That's your shim. That comes out when you're done. When you're about three-fourths through this floor, you won't need that anymore, but I'm going to keep it there. You don't need to put spacers on the end. If you need to put something underneath there, like I said, just leave yourself until you hit the wall. Because as you're hammered, it will slide enough under that wall. So I'm going to go about a quarter inch under. That's a half inch drywall. There's enough, usually, dropping stuff down there from the insulation. It's not going to, that's your float. It's not going to float like that. It's expansion and contraction. It's just, that whole thing is made for repairs. This stuff is already flexible enough, it's not gonna do that. So I'm gonna lay out my next pieces. Let's go over here, let's pick out some boards. And I'm gonna change my design so I don't have one with the stripe down the middle. So we'll start with this one. Now I don't usually use a full board. I will use a full board and then I'll have a cut on the other end, a short one to keep it staggering because I was trying to keep a zigzag coming into from the hallway to here. I'm not going to use a full board. This one, I had a full board here. I'm going to come one more row and then we use a full board to start. So this is going to be the piece I'm going to cut. I already realized I cannot cut under 20 inches because then my drop is going to be, it's going to fall underneath the eight inch uh, requirements. You're not supposed to really have under eight inch. So how I do my alignment is I got that one. Here's a light, nice light piece. We'll put this one here. Find another one. This one is similar, but it's going to have this piece on the top. And my last piece, I have some drops already that have the correct end cut off. So this one. It's not the same as this one, or this one. Okay, it's the same. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. I'll show you how we do this quickly. Because, you know, I'm a professional floor installer. So we have 23 inches. So, this one, I could chop that one down. I'm gonna have to, so. I don't, to save on a cut, I'm not gonna cut this one. So we're gonna put this one in place. So what you do is you lock this groove in. If you're coming from the other side like I was, you would end up actually going underneath it and clicking it in. Like, let's say you started on the other corner, depending on how your layout is. I know they want you to start in the top left corner or the longest, out, most outwards wall that goes flows into your, your doorway. Not a lot of houses are set up like that. So let's just say this was, instead of being like this, it was like this. You would just come up underneath it, like this, and lock it in place. It's not that easy. Now it's locked in, it's not that easy. So this is gonna be the piece we're gonna put in. Make sure you have the right piece. So this in as close to the wall as you can. Make sure you're in your groove. Make sure that square C had opened up. The seam opened, even though I pushed it in there. So I'm gonna make sure it's in. A lot of times you just use your hammer, you tap down on it. I shouldn't start any other end. Don't worry about scratching these. But just don't hit it on the side like that. Except I grabbed the wrong piece. <laughs> this is the piece I was supposed to get. Sorry about that. Because it's got to change out. So. So it's in there. I'm gonna lift it up, get it closest to the woodwork as possible. Some, you may have to take the woodwork off. Like we were gonna take the woodwork and drop it down and not use the tool, not use a quarter round. But I just painted, it just painted. So I took the carpet out. I didn't realize when we bought this, this was gonna be this thin. So that was gonna be a little bit higher. Not taking the woodwork down and replacing it. I, I'm not, next, I'm just gonna put the quarter round on. So, this is where I'm using my little scrap piece. <clears throat> Make sure when you do your scrap piece as your hammer block, you do not use a cutoff flat end. I've seen all these videos, because heck, I watched some videos first. You're gonna tear this up. And I know maybe it doesn't need to be said, because if you're doing this, you wanna use the channel to lock into the channel 
if you're using that as a as a striking device. And you know, don't go slim, you gotta watch it all the way down because the seam will open up. So I hear that, I just, I just hit the wall. It will go under the wall. As I'm coming down here, it's gonna sneak under the wall. Now if I was to put a spacer here, even if it's super thin on both ends, when I get those spacers out or leave them there, eventually with walking, it can push under because it's such a thin spacer. I like to hit the wall because as I'm hammering these down, it eventually will get under the wall. So that's just, now we're into our measurements. So we're gonna grab one more piece. We're going to use, we'll use this piece. So make sure you get your stagger right. We're cutting this piece off. So I got my locking channel. This is going to be the one that's going to go under here. Or should I use the other one? So I'm going to trim this piece. Actually, that's going to fit. All right, so I am going to use a full piece on this one. I'll show you how this is put in. These knee pads suck. So on this J channel, there's always going to be a gap here. Make sure that you have your clearance away. Make sure that your vapor barrier isn't kinked like that. Sometimes you may have to cut it, take the, because this stuff, put this vapor barrier down. It's, it's hard, it comes kinked to begin with. It's got folds and everything. I've had to cut pieces out, duct tape over. And there was no mold issues on this floor from the carpet and the padding. And so I'm not worried, we don't have a moisture issue here. So I'm gonna start it into the, um, the seven and a half inch uh, J channel here. Keep my spacing here so I have, I'm in here straight. Now I'm gonna lift up a little bit, get this corner. Close to the wall, if this was a closer piece of the wall, it's very hard to lift this up. A lot of times I have been able just to push it in like this as you wiggle. That one's in. So it came out of the J channel a little bit. So that's in, so now I'm going to use my other block. Sometimes you have to come underneath it to keep your proper angle. I'm in the groove, just as a small seam. Just to show you, we're gonna use the part with the groove. This part overlaps. Overlap your adjacent piece a little bit. Nice little tap. Make sure the seam is gonna be somewhat tight before you slide it this way. And that's tight. And sometimes you could just No, I'm gonna this one in. Yeah, really, this is my first time doing plank flooring. And then one last, follow your finger so you won't smash it. Don't do that. <clears throat> one little tap to make sure. I don't want to tap them too much, but what happened is the longer your floor and the more you're tapping, you can start pulling these other pieces out, or you're going to come down the line, you're going to have a big buckle right here. And every time you step on that floor, you're going to hear that. So even though we had the overlapping part of this vapor barrier with the kink, I still don't have a hump here, so that's good. So you make sure your seam is tight. Move on to the next one. Keep everything out of your way. Could do it this way, just put it in, but I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna do it with the. So, are you able to see this? Yes. Okay. Actually, down into the seam? Yes. Alright. Try this again. Do a little lift. Now I can lift up a little bit more because I have the, um, and I guess the wall, and don't get your finger pinched in there. 
Now this is this is where I can actually go like this and watch it as you go down. Make sure the seam is tight. You know, it's sometimes where there's another uh, stagger spot here, it will give it'll, it'll be a little bit of a gap. Take the time to make sure you don't see any gaps as much as possible. Make sure it's in. This is vinyl floor. This particular tranquility brand, I don't know if it's the mid-grade or whatever it is, I've noticed they're doing this, even on flat pieces, where I put two pieces like this. No resistance or pressure put on them. I will lock them in, and I will look at it, and then there's a gap in the middle. So now I'm pushing hard, I'm watching it, and it's with light movement, it's coming out. It's like, you know, this is a couple thousand dollars worth of, I think we got like 40, 42 boxes of this stuff. I mean, it's, you know, but also too, the cheapest labor quote I got on this thing was 30, with me buying the material, them not getting the markup and blah, blah, blah. I think I was at like $3,700 labor to do the 1,200 square feet plus or take we have down here and all the cuts. And I was like, ah, uh, no. It's just for me, it's not like this is an emergency situation where you have to have it done. So here's the space. So here's me hitting the wall. See? Hitting the wall. And look at this. I forgot I had pre-measured this before the video. So we're hitting the wall, and you can see how this is right here. There's just enough gap. But you know that this will go under the wall at one time. It, it could with walking and moving furniture. So here I'm going to hook this into the channel. Pull it back a little bit. You don't want to overlap this into here right away. These, yeah, let me show you. These channels, you'll see some of these. You'll be trying to push it in there like this. And it's just these, these J, I think it's called a J channel. I've noticed these J channels are, they'll break off. And some I've had to use my utility knife. Thor. All right. I've had to use my utility knife on some of these to not cut it off, but to trim it flat because some of those hallway spots were a pain. Always close your knife before you set it down because you'll be the one to get stabbed in the ankle by accident. So make sure this is in here tight. Set it down. Like I said, clear your, your debris out of the way because you will get fuzzies and stuff from your shoes and everything else. I'm trying my best to not pound these in. I'm trying to do it by hand like this. Just, I mean, for me, I'm not a floor guy. This stuff is kind of tight. You gotta watch. See, I gotta over the clip there. This piece is gonna go in easier because it's longer with this part. And now, I mean, I even have to tap just to go in. See, plus the wood works up. So that one went in easy. I would, I do not have, I would have to probably use 500 gigabytes of memory to video me putting in one of that 30 foot row underneath the cuts and how I cut it and how long that took. So now I'm gonna go back over this real quick. A little tap to make sure I'm in that seam. I don't want to buckle these or be putting too much pressure, but I'll make sure they're nice and tight. Come by, do a last inspection. Make sure it looks tight. I did want to show how these are cut. So if somebody wants to cut these, I need a scrap piece anyways. So after you make your, your measurement, you see the scriber, show you how easy this stuff is to cut. Make sure you have something underneath so you don't break the floor. I like to cut from the back side. I have the cutter tool. It's bending. It's not even a knife. It's just like a compression. Like uh, it just wasn't for this to me. This was better, and a multi tool. You could use a circular saw too. And so it is part of your knee, snap it, and you usually could snap it back off. 
it snaps off that way. If you if you score from this side, you'll be able to break it back off. And it's, it, I don't want to mess up that finish. Just cut away from your body. Not like this. Make a slip and hit my hand. And it should just snap off. You have a nice clean cut. You don't have to worry about peeling off and scraping all that stuff. So. All right, so that's how I'm doing my, my flooring. And this is probably going to take me uh, three, three hours. And then maybe I'll do a video of how I cut with the multi-tool the right depth underneath the woodwork so I can get the stuff to fit nice and tight with just enough wiggle room. I did, I did buy this little tool that I realized with my background, I don't need this to conform over anything. So I know how to flip the boards and figure it all out. All right. Thank you.